one, and we are officially live. Hello, Facebook, and welcome. I'm so excited today to be joined by my guest, Michelle Sayward, who hails from the great state of Michigan. Um, uh, go Bucks! I'll say that. Now. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, man. I'm totally kidding. I I knew that would get you. Um, but no, I'm really excited to have you on today because, um, and you and I were just talking kind of behind the scenes here um, about, you know, when we're, you know, as, as team leaders, as, as successful agents, you know, we typically, we read a lot of books and, and oftentimes when you're reading books, you discover other books inside of books. And so I discovered you from my conversation with Tina um, because, you know, obviously she looked up to you, you were a great agent in your marketplace. Yeah. And um, I started doing my own research and I'm like, how could I not know this lady? She's She's been a top producer for years and years and years. And you know, it, it's funny because I ask you to send me some things that you're really great about. And so what I'm starting to learn about you is that you're a very humble person. Um, you're a lion for your clients, but you are a, you're a humble person. You're, you're, it's hard to get you to brag about yourself yeah. And I love, so I do love that quality, uh, I, and 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 so appreciate that. But tell me a little bit about your background. I mean, you and I, we this is the first time we've ever actually talked, other than the phone call we made before this. Yeah. But tell me a little bit about your background. Yeah. Um, okay. So, gosh, I'm, I'm just gonna say this. There's roofers right above my head. I couldn't control that today. I didn't know. They, whatever. So if you hear that, that's what's going on. We're right. banging over here. No. Um, so, so about me, um, I've been in real estate 18 years full time. Um, now you want to talk about a story instead of a story. Um, I had right when I showed up in this business, it was after nine 11, I was like Forrest Gump when I got my real estate license, you know, when they say Forrest, just keep running. That yeah. was me. I didn't talk to any former realtors before I started. I um, wanted my real estate license to get out of my corporate office job and still work for that corporation, but be out in the field doing the leasing, zoning, land acquisition. Um, they were building cell phone towers at that, at that time, and I wanted to be the person on the ground. So I got my real estate license to be the person on the ground and not the person in the cubicle. That was seriously my whole thought process behind it. And then 9-11 came and I thought, well, I'll just sell real estate full time. I have my license. I'll just go do that. Makes sense. I didn't talk to a. Uh, I didn't talk to anyone in the industry beforehand. Nobody. Yeah. So I showed up with my unemployment checks, which covered only half of my mortgage payment, and I showed up every single day in a suit, like I had a job to go to, forty hours, and I just started learning, 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 watching and paying attention, and um, it wasn't long before the broker, the company, was like this girl is showing up every day like she has a real job and she has no clients. Um, and Dave Abdullah is a great Century 21 agent. I think he hit number one Century 21 worldwide just a couple years ago. He worked in my company and my broker said, Dave, meet Michelle. Michelle, meet Dave. And, and then Dave um, did some one-on-one -on -one mentoring with me. I got really lucky. He saw my drive and then he made me prove it. I had to show up at 7.30 in the morning to meet with him because he didn't want it to mess up his day, you know? And, um, and and then it got to the point where I was the only one showing up. And he's like, look, kid, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it's great you're excited, but you're gonna have to do this different way, just call me, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I got into um, coaching with Mike Ferry. I've been with Mike Ferry organization for a long time. Uh, he exposed me to that and um, and and then you know it's just grown organically you know you you show up every day you listen to what other people got to say you put in the work you read the books you know filling your mind with what you can and can't do and you know building that belief I think it's about mindset it's yeah. big about mindset and um, and then it you know it started off I mean I wasn't LB Stasek posted on uh, social media the other day. He said, um, how many of you were rookie of the year? I was rookie of the year. I did my little 25 deals in the first year. And then, you know, it grows. And so, you know, last year I did 185 deals, 185 the year before that, you know, 175. I've kind of been stuck at that level for a little while and trying to figure out how to break out of that now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's. 
That's it. Well, you have been, what I know about you too, and you've got great references within the industry, and I'm sure your clients would say the same thing, is you, you, you've been the pillar of consistency um, in real estate, uh, in Michigan real estate, and in and, and, and national real estate for, for, for that matter. But so, we, you know, the title of this was, um, you know, winning more listings. And, and what I gathered from the text messages from your teammates is yeah. that, um, She's a great lister. She wins listings. She gets listings. It was just, it was consistent, right? Is that you get listing. And we know that any successful real estate business is driven by the amount of listings you're getting. You, you know, yeah. you can work a buyer business, but you can't scale a buyer business because we, as real estate agents, we just don't have the time, right? So what we do is, is typically we take over the listings and we leverage other folks to help go out and work our buyers so that we're still, you know, obviously we're, we're creating income from buyers, but it's not, it's, it's not what's driving our business. Right. So the, the overriding topic of today's conversation, I really want to dig into your listing prez um, from kind of, kind of from soup to nuts um, because I want to know what you're doing. It's, it's one thing to say I sold 185 homes last year, right? But yeah. like you've been selling, a hundred over a hundred homes for years and years and years. Yes. And so that's that's something that's entirely different. So mm -hmm. what I want to know is I want to know like what is like from the I guess from the time that you're talking to a seller on the phone. Yeah. Um, are you sending out some sort of a pre-list package or or anything like that? Yeah. I mean, at, yes. So I, I'll say this: it's my prospecting is key. Your your methods of who you're prospecting to to get these appointments, I'll take from the top, yeah. um, will change over time as as you grow in the business. When when you're new, you know you're building your foundation off your circle of influence. Um, you're building it off of for sale by owners, expired listings. These are the things that you're. That is that is how I got my legs, and that is how I think every agent needs to get their legs to start because you don't have the database and as you grow into this business you it becomes a bit easier because you've created now a database of people who know you love you trust you and and you've done right by them and their family over the years and you will see a greater you know referral base so i'm i'm blessed now that it's at the point for me where about 50% of my business comes from um, my database now let me let me add that the database doesn't come naturally. You still have to stay in front of them and remind them that you're in the business over and over and over again, and how important referrals are. Um, I just got a listing referral this week from a past client, and he said, "I didn't know if I should give them your phone number or not. I didn't know if you wanted me to share that." <laughs> I was like, "Are you kidding? You give it to everybody." You give it to your kids to take to school. What are you kidding me? Um, you know, and um, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't think that. I'm like, okay, so this is the kind of reminder stuff to have these conversations with people over and over again. Um, on the listing side of things, yes, is to answer your question. Um, I'm doing pre-qualifying before I go. Um, I like to know before I get there that there is a very high chance I'm going to be taking that listing when I show up. Mm -hmm. um, when you find yourself going on appointments that are not pre-qualified in advance, and then you're, you're gonna, you won't leave there with the listing, and then it's gonna rock your confidence. You okay. gotta have like confidence builders over and over and over again. So um, making sure definitely you're pre-qualifying in advance and just knowing what you're walking in. So what types of things do you want to know, like you personally, Michelle? What type, what type of things do you want to know before mm -hmm. you're actually willing to commit your time to going out to the property? I want to know everything. Um, I, I'm like I said, I've been with Mike Ferry, so I use that pre-qualifying script quite often, which is um, you know those series of questions. Have you been keeping up on the market? Do you have any idea what you'd like to list your home for? What are they thinking? How much do you owe on the property? Had you thought about selling the home yourself? Would you rent the property out? You know, I want to know where are they moving to? How soon do they have to be there? I want to know you know everything I can about that client's motivation and you know what they're thinking realistically financially if this is going to make sense. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm walking into the appointment already empowered. Yeah. So 
here's what I want everybody to get from this is that it's not, there's more to just going on the listing appointment, right? There's the pre-qualification of the listing appointment. There's, there's, um, it's, it's all about optimization, right? It's the same thing. I had a conversation, actually, I did a Facebook live the other day when I was talking about, you know, optimizing your, pro your prospecting. Well, you can optimize listing appointments too, because number one is you're pre-qualifying them, right? Number two is that, you know, you, if you're sending out some sort of a pre-list package, right, that actually sells you before you get there. And I would assume you guys are doing something like that. that as well. Yeah, I do that also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and essentially what you're doing by sending out a pre-listing listing package is you're answering a lot of the common questions that mm -hmm. sellers would already have so yeah. that you, you can shorten the amount of time you actually have to spend at the listing appointment by answering those questions in advance, right? Yeah. So, Okay, so talk to me about your pre-listing package. What's going on in your pre-listing package? So that pre-listing package, as you're speaking, Mike, it's it's. Uh, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, like you said at the beginning of this, Michelle, why haven't I heard of you? Well, when I get to their house, I want to have sent the pre-listing package in advance because I'm not there to talk about me. I'm there to talk about them and their needs and how can I serve them. That's why I'm there. That's why they invited mm -hmm. me out. So, you know, if I can sell them ahead of time, hey, look, here's my track record, here's my reviews. Look, I'm credentialed. I'm not I'm not going to, you know, sleep till noon and then put a sign on your ground and let wait for other agents to call and and never, you know, keep you give you any feedback about anything. Oops. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Um someone's calling. Sorry. Okay. And um I'm like I'm not going to that's not that's not how I roll, you know. Yeah. And not, and of course, if that stuff comes up, we'll recap it in the conversation. Here's what I'm going to do to get your house sold. But I'm there to to talk about how can I serve and, and what's going to work best and make my and make professional recommendations for them. Yeah. So what? Talk about the mindset. Like we're talking about everything that happens before the listing right now, right? So, mm -hmm. like you are like because you know that the list there's there's this period before the listing. Right. So if you schedule a listing today and it's for Friday, right, there's a series of events that that happen. One is the pre-qualification. One is the pre-listing um, package that goes out. And then, you know, and then you're doing your due diligence on pricing to see where they're at and all that stuff. If you can yeah. get that information. And then um, but when you talk, talk to me about that moment that you get in the car and you're driving over to the listing appointment. What is what's tell me specifically what is your mindset at that point? At that, actually, on that car ride, I'm I'm recapping who they are and what they're what they want and what they're about. I'm I'm literally pull out my notes before I pull up to the house. I'll pull up like a few doors away, pull out my notes, and I'm like, okay, their names are you know Bob and Sue, and you know they're looking to move to Ohio, and you know here's what they're thinking that they can sell it for reasonably, and like I go through all of it. They told me that they, you know, whatever, they might sell by owner. They have a family member who's interested in buying the house, like whatever. Like I, so I'm, I'm thinking about them going into it. And yeah. then I'm also a little bit strategic. Can I be telling people this part? I'm a little bit strategic in that um, I, I probably at this point should be having other people do my market analysis for me before I go in. I should have probably my staff, you know, do that for me. Um, but I'm in and out of so many houses and I know them that this is where my little bit of strategy comes in that um, I'm making sure I pull comps that I know really well. They were either listings I sold, I had previewed, I'd been through so I can speak again, here I am going with the confidence thing again, you know, intelligently about the market and, and what they are. And it might be that I pulled a comp that I sold a year ago, but guess what? It was around the block. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was right there in their neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, then I can, you know, say, Hey, do you remember the people around the block? They sold last year, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so and what you're doing there, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, is, is she's creating familiarity and why the reason why that's important is because the, the, the seller can then identify, they can personally identify with that property. If you if you give them something that they can't identify with, right. it doesn't have nearly the impact mm -hmm. as a property that they've driven by or they've seen or they've followed or you know that's in their neighborhood. So, yeah. so and they might not even know that I brought the buyer to the house behind them because yeah. it had a different company's sign in front of it. Mm -hmm. And then when they see that it closed and I was the selling agent, it then it also reinforces, look, 
I'm in the know and I'm local and I'm, you know, so it does a lot of things. And then they also, gosh, you know what? Um, Peggy knew Bob and Sue. I can call Peggy for a reference on the show. Like yeah. they start making those connections about who they can, you know, call to verify if I'm good or if I was nice to work with or whatever. Sure. So it does okay. a lot of things. So you, what I'm hearing you say then is you're, and by the way, I, I actually agree with you on this. I, I think that for those who are, those who are giving away their comps to an assistant or some sort of an administrative position, um, you've got, man, you better have a great relationship with that person uh, or they better know the market. Um, because in the, the only reason that I like to do the comps myself yeah. is because it get like, it gets me in alignment with that particular house, right? Yeah. Like I, because I'll spend time just like you said, and then I can start, I can start to build my story, right? Based on what I'm seeing, right? If, if I don't do the comps myself, then somebody else has built my story for me. And I'd rather tell my own story than someone else's. Yeah. And I'm sure any, well, I'm sure my real estate coach would be saying right now, Michelle, you need to let your assistant do this or whatever. And then just preview the work that they do. But then I just kind of feel like I'm creating more work. You know what yeah. I mean? I'd rather just know what I know going into it and have it laid out before me. And hey, I mean, does it work all the time? No, I just went on an appointment last week and I went, I showed up at their house and I went, crap, this is the same style floor plan, you know, as the one I just sold and I didn't bring that floor plan. I guess I really wasn't, you know, thinking about which floor plan this was coming into it. Dang, yeah. I could have brought something, some more substantial information. It does happen. But, um, yeah. but then, you know, at the listing appointment, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I'm hopefully answering every objection I can or every question and concern that they have so that there's not a shadow of a doubt that I'm the best person for the job to get to get it sold for them and that yeah. they have the utmost confidence that um you know it'll be done right and it's gonna be done for top dollar and it's you know so I I I only want to take listings that they're going to see me um as well that I'm gonna be what was it? I want to, I want to become their fan. Like I want them to say, Michelle was great. Like, you know, um, if I'm getting, if I'm getting the sense that they're not thinking what I'm presenting is so great, that I'm not the person for them. That's, yeah. that's, so yeah. you or pull up at the house, your mindset is mm -hmm. I'm getting dialed in on who they are and what their situation yeah, is. Right? So you're thinking about that on the drive over, which allows mm -hmm. you to, prepare for that appointment. I, I guess mentally, you can kind of mentally do a walkthrough uh, before you even meet with them. So you pull up to the, you pull up to the house, you get out of the car, you go to the door, you ring the doorbell or knock on the door and then they answer the door. And then what happens from that point? Um, my immediate is, um, you know, let me see this house before we sit down and start talking. Let me do a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know, just assume I know it's in good shape. <laughs> if I don't know the house. You know, um, so we do a walkthrough and then first things first is like, OK, let's sit down and go over the comps. Let's go over what's selling in the market. Let's get down to, you know, business. And then, you know, having the seller give their input on what they're seeing in the comps. What does this data show them? Mm -hmm. I want their opinion first, um, you know, because sometimes they know more even about the local market than I do. It does yeah. happen on occasion. Sure. You know? There's a lot of data out there for consumers these days, no doubt about it. So are you so like much, during yeah. your walkthrough, are mm -hmm. you um are you using that as an opportunity to build rapport also? And then if so, how are you doing that during the walkthrough? Yeah. I mean there is there is a, a bit of rapport building through the walkthrough, sure. And then I'm also asking questions that are pretty assumptive. Are you including the washer dryer in the sale as I'm looking at the laundry room right there, you know? Okay, you know, so so tell me, you know, um, you know, and it, it depends on if they tell me, hey, I wanna sell this thing as is, okay, I'm not gonna make the suggestion of, well, before you put it up on the market, have you given thought to replacing the carpet in the, in the guest room, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, you know, and I'll get a sense for kind of where they're at at that point. If they say, oh God, yeah, we know it needs to be done. Okay, fantastic, that's gonna affect the time that we have before we put it up for sale. You know, and what's important to you? Getting top dollar or is it, 
you know, the time on market. Yeah. Um, so, so we have those kind of rapport building conversations as we do the walkthrough. And then it also, I think, brings it home to the seller that there are, you know, properties that are going to be in better condition than theirs. There's properties that are going to be in lesser condition than theirs. And as we're going through the comps, they have something that they can compare to. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So, you, you know, do you have a place like, well, one thing I want to like preface this whole conversation by is obviously there's a, there's a difference. And one thing we didn't talk about, but we can kind of rewind the tape back to right now is that there's a difference between, and, and, and I'm sure years and years ago when your business wasn't 50%, you know, mm -hmm. sphere and 50% new business, right. that it's more of a grind. You know that, right? Like we, we know that I would much rather sit down with somebody that, um, that I either done business with or somebody's referred me to, right? That's a much, it's a much different appointment. And so, you know, for those of you who are still out there building a business and even you, Michelle, like 50% of your business is still new business development, right? So expired to sell by owners when you might be competing against somebody else, somebody, another agent, then, you know, those, those appointments go, they're in two entirely different appointments. And, and so you've got to like new business, you got to have your A game on people that don't know you. Yeah. And, so, and so you're so I'm just assuming and I probably should have told you this before that we're that this appointment is is a new business appointment. So, you know, that's why you're obviously in your building rapport. Yes. And not you wouldn't do that anyway. But yeah. so you're walking through your building rapport. You're asking questions. Right. You're looking for commonalities with people so you can you know continue to strengthen that relationship. And then you do you have a place you like to sit down? Do you like to sit down at the kitchen table? Do you oh, like yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. If they actually like, if they say to me, "Oh, let's sit down here on the couch," I actually say, "No, I I prefer let's because I have paperwork to spread out. Let's sit in the kitchen." So I'm, you know, I'm I want to get both of them sitting down with me. Um, so so yeah, so that's that's the end of it. I mean, do I at this point? Um, I used to I used to close a lot harder for the signature, um, and I do close harder for the signature when they're not known to me you know, which is probably a mistake at this point. I think I need to close even just a little bit harder, even if they are known to me and they yeah. are past clients because um, that can be pretty assumptive and that can sometimes be a mistake. Yeah. Um, if you're not still closing hard, you still need to pull that A game, you know, for yeah. whatever you're doing there. But, um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, Gosh, I'll do I'll do pretty much whatever it takes to, to leave the thing here. That's how many, like how long does your listing appointment run these days? And by the way, hi Al 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 Adala says hello guys and hi, Matt 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 Millia. It's so pivotal to ask tough questions before running the appointment. This is great. Absolutely, yep. Matt. Couldn't agree with you more. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Go ahead, Michelle. No, that's okay. Um, I saw them on there too popping up. They're like right over your face, pretty much yeah. on your forehead. So there you go. Um, but um. Yeah, I'm, uh, what was the question? I don't even know. How, how long is your typical listing appointment? Because oh. you, you have some people that they run two hours, some people run you know, 30 minutes. No. What does it look like? Honestly, I would say an hour. Some are 45 minutes if they don't have a lot of questions. Other ones could be an hour and a half. Just depends on how many questions come up, You know, um, what kind of dialogue happens after that. Look, I was on one the other night. They were past clients of mine and I forgot it was an appointment. Because we finished with the with the real estate side of things, and then we started talking about friends in common. And before I knew it, I was like, "I gotta go home. Like this is it's going on eight o'clock. I gotta get out of here." Um, but you know, so I on average, I would say an hour plus or minus. Um, again, it just depends on the appointment. And the um, flow, yeah, you're right. So the flow, the energy you're getting back from the sellers, obviously, is 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 dependent on whether they're actually receiving your message or not, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think it, but it's important even on past clients or circles of influence or, you know, people you've done business with before, you're there first for business. Yeah. If you don't go there first for business, you're setting yourself up for trouble because if you go there just as friends, 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 and then try to turn it into business, it gets kind of weird. You, you know, like just let's get the business part out of the way and then, okay, you know, be social. Yeah, because there is a point to where you can be overly friendly, right? Where you, where, where you know, they don't, they don't think it was serious. Like, <laughs> she just did. She just like you know, stroll in here thirty minutes late, and you know, she's in she, she's in blue jeans, and I told her I got to get to my kids' dance recital. Like, yeah. come on, like, 
you, you still know, want to be respected as the professional. <laughs> right, 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 right. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, when when I was uh, preparing for this call for you, um, you know, I asked my office, I'm like, what do I do? What do I do well? And the other thing I want to bring up too is um, I don't let I don't let deals die very easy, and I and I do negotiate the hell out of them. Okay. That's the other thing I do, um, I don't like the word no. Yeah. So to what? Me, do you, what if if somebody tells you no at a listing appointment? What's your What's your I, response? You know that thing. You know what I think? It means not right now. Yeah. <laughs> it means it means you know I can come back uh, on Tuesday and get it signed. It means. Um, you know, so no is, is really hard. Yeah. I, You're not giving up. In other words, if you hear the word, no, it's just a not right now. Uh, but I'm coming back to this and I'm going to, I'm going to come it. from a different angle. Yeah. Then that's what it means. So, so talk, so talk to me about, okay, so here's what we've established, you know, um, that when, you, before you get there, you know, you're in the mindset of, Hey, this is, um, this is all about you, right? I'm trying to get involved in what their story is to mentally prepare. I get to the door. I'm, I'm walking through the house. I'm building rapport with them. And then I get down, I sit down at the table and then it, now it's go time, right? Now it's, now it's, um, you know, it's, it becomes all about them. It's, it's, I'm asking questions. Um, we're going through, Everybody, everybody's different on this. Um, I don't like me personally. I don't spend a ton of time on the price. And I, if I, if I know they're meeting someone after me, like I always try to go last, just so you know. Like I'll always say, "Are you meeting with? Are you meeting with other agents?" Yeah. Okay, right. when, are, when is that meeting? And and I and I'll say, "Okay, well, can I can I meet with you after that?" Right. If I can't though, Michelle, I, I typically don't review price because what I'll say is, and and guys, this is this is. This has been going on for years and years and years. But what I'll say is, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I really needed to come out and see your property, see the condition um, to be able to determine price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information back to my office. And then I'd like to schedule another meeting with you. And I'll schedule that meeting at the appointment. Right. And, and then I'll come back out and review pricing after that last agent is gone. But what do you do? Like when you sit down, what, 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 what are you rolling out at that point? That drives me crazy when people do that, Mike. I hate it. <laughs> Good job. I hate it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm like, oh, so if I, yeah, actually, I'll try to kick the legs out of somebody like you when you, if that gets done to me. I'd be like, <laughs> Mike didn't come prepared. He didn't yeah, come no. prepared in advance. Well, listen, I've got an objection for them all, man. Would you like, what, in, you know, you make it sound like, what, you, what? Would, you, would your doctor ever, you know, would your doctor ever, ever, you know, prescribe you a drug or, or diagnose you without looking at you first? Like, there's no way, right? This, your home is unique, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. We need to be able to look at everything, all these upgrades, your yellow, cat, your green cabinets, your purple wallpaper. I mean, that is unique to your home. And then I would say, I brought everything and the kitchen sink with me. Half of this information we're not even going to use. Does it apply? I, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we could go all day like this. Yeah. Well, but, um, but yeah, so so no, um, I do. I will. I, I'll try to. I would like to be last, but if it depends on who I'm competing against, if I don't see that other agent as a threat, I don't feel I need to be last. I yeah. can be first and lock it down. I mean, there's been many times where I'm first, just scheduling conflicts or this or that, or I'm not worried about who my competition is. Um, where I get to call the other agent and say, "Hey, Mike, they thought you were great, but I convinced them to list the home with me." So you have your first opportunity to bring any buyers through that you may have. Love it. It's going to go on the market Friday. So you better yeah. be here. <laughs> you know, hey, that's just a nice way of saying F you buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you lose. There you yeah, go. You no. lose. You lose. So, okay. So let's digress, man. Um, so you get, you're sitting down at the table and, and what happens? Like, and first of all, like, who are you presenting to? Are you, do you present, are you using like the disc? Are you, how are you, how do you know who to present to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The disc that I could be better at that going into it. Um, I think the most difficult personality styles for me are amiables, which is weird because I married one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's the most difficult for me um, because they won't tell you that they don't like something or they don't agree. 
-hmm. and I'm uh, I'm a high expressive high driver. Yeah. So, you know, and the engineers are super easy for me, like the analytical side. Mm -hmm. I just load them up with data and then they're so happy. And then, yeah. and then I ask them to go measure something and they're, yeah. See, you know, not be overlooked though, guys, you, you guys who are watching this and who will watch and listen to this, mm -hmm. this is the, the small minute details that go so far is understanding who you're presenting to, right? When you get to the door, you ask, Hey, walk me, why don't you give me the grand tour of the house? Right. Yeah. And whoever, either the person that's in control will tell the other person to get, to give the tour of the house or that person will take leadership and give you the tour. Yeah. The yeah. person you need to be spending, you know, 60, 65, 70% of your time on. You're so right, Mike. That's, yeah, yeah. And you pick up on it. And I think that this is over the years of, um, you know, just being, meeting in so many faces and so many different personalities over the years. Yeah. You do, you start to pick up on that. You Ryan really Ogletree, you're right. Ask great questions. Great questions will tell you who yeah. you're presenting to. Absolutely, yeah. brother. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. And if, yeah, if someone's sitting at that table and they start asking about your list to sales price ratio and they start talking about your, your days on market and they start talking about the market average, guess who you're presenting to in analytical. Yeah. So if, you come prepared with everything, right? You know, if you got a, oh, you know yeah. if you got a, a, an engineer, like I got all the data right here, baby. To go, have, right? Even if I don't know, I have an engineer because I've met, Oh, you're frozen now. Oh, there you're back. Okay. Because I've only, only talked to, you know, one of one spouse and not the other before I come out. So I might think that I'm presenting to an expressive personality and she wants to hear about how great the photography is going to be and how great we're going to present the house. Mm -hmm. And then I show up and what, this is who you're married to. So I gotta, you gotta have all, all personality styles in your, you know, toolbox. Mm -hmm. I love it. And then, so, so first are you going, where do you fit pricing in there? What do you mean? Where do I fit pricing? How, in? how much time do you spend on pricing? Because you know, there, there's, there is, um, there are different components, right. To a listing presentation. And, and one of those components might be pricing, right? One of those components, yeah. might be what you do from a marketing perspective, one of those, mm -hmm. one of those is just logistical stuff, right? So where do you spend most? Is there, is there, is there a flow to your appointment? Yeah. I mean, first we have that conversation about pricing. I mean, yeah. that, if, if we're not on the same page with that, then why go any further? Because it's not going to matter what I'm going to do to sell the house. Love it. Love it. Doesn't matter. We're not, we're not on the same mind. So, and then, so that might only take, depends on who they are and how much they're going to have objections about it or what their thoughts are. But then okay. it might only seriously take like five to 10 minutes talking about price. It's not, no, it's not big at all, really. Either they get it or they don't, you know? And then if they don't, then maybe I have to answer a couple objections about, you know, uh, when we want to leave room for negotiation or, you know, we want to ask more and come down later and the common objections, folks, there's not a lot of objections. If you know the answers to these questions, it's the same ones for over and over again. I promise they haven't changed in 18 years. And that's, yeah. that's how long yeah. I've been doing it. So I'm sure it's been longer than that. Um, yeah. so, so you address those questions. And then the next thing is I go over, what can they expect? Now I haven't even talked about what I'm going to do yet. I'm just talking about what can they expect? Because someone said this to me and I don't remember who it was, but it made so much sense. There's a lot of anxiety that goes around, around, around on about it. I didn't even think of it this way, but put yourself in their shoes. They are at work. They go to work. They're at work right now, right? It's um, 1130 in the, in the morning. They're at work. They're having lunch with their coworkers, and they're already thinking, oh, the realtor is coming today at six. Mm -hmm. And before they left for work, they cleaned their house. They, you know, made sure they had a babysitter for the kids so they could have an undivided attention conversation with you, right? They're already thinking about it before you get there. They've already got anxiety before you walk in the door. I'm like, that to me was like huge. So now I need to let them know what to expect going forward mm -hmm. because it will calm and relax them through the process. Yeah. Now, you don't have to, as you're driving down the road, you don't have to give them every twist and turn and turn your headlights on and it's, you know, pine tree on the left. You don't have to do that, but you do have to give them a summary of like, hey, you know, there's going to be maybe a couple bumps ahead. They're called inspections and appraisals and they're, but here, we're here to handle it, you know, and just sort of give them a heads up before they get there. Yep. So, so then by the time we get to, okay, I'm at peace with 
how this transaction is going to be handled. Now I can talk about what I'm going to do in terms of marketing and exposure. But sometimes yeah. at that point, they don't care. I love that you're getting into the mindset of the seller. Brian Ogletree says it's the most important appointment of their day. And he's right. Like oftentimes we don't think about it from the seller's perspective. We, we're only considering our own thoughts and feelings. And if you get into the mind of the seller, you, you can get into an, you can get into an immediate alignment as soon as you get at the house. If you're, yeah. if you get into an alignment with the seller, you know, both emotionally, and and um, and from a date from from a just just from an overall date, like a data perspective on, on what they what they would want to expect after they've done all this work to prepare for you to come out to their property. So I love that stuff. Love that mindset. Okay, so you you uh, you you essentially you've you're rolling out the data. You're setting expectations. Um, you know, the, you've agreed on pricing, right? The, the appointments come into you know coming to an end, and then and, and how do you wrap things up typically? A signed contract. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> here, right? Press hard. There's three copies. Right. No, no. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it wraps up with, hey, my photographer is going to get in touch with you, and we'll, you can book that on your schedule. And, you know, here's more of what to expect. Now that you've signed the contract, here's more of what to expect. Yeah. You know, once the photography comes back, we have to post it, you know, at that time. We have 48 hours from when the photos, you know, come back. It will be live. Well, have you review the listing more what to expect? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and, and what, what I want this audience to understand is that what Michelle's doing is she's winning a lot of her appointments before she even goes to the door. You know what I mean? Right. And, and, and so she understands she's been in the industry long enough. She knows like I do that the objections have never changed. And by the way, they will never change. They're always going to be the same. And you know you have enough experience. You've been doing it long enough. You built a great reputation in your community as the go-to agent. Um, and so you know I, I I know that if I'm playing devil's advocate, we will have some new guys and gals that'll come in and watch this, and they'll say, well, you know, I don't have the reputation, or I haven't been doing it as long as Michelle, and I don't have that that level of success, success and experience. What do you say to those people, Michelle? My head's already like shaking. No, I'm like, so what? It doesn't matter. I didn't have that level of experience. 18 years ago and what I did was made it about them fulfilling their needs service and you know how can I make this a much more pleasurable experience for them along the way and you know what that people talk people talk incredibly and that is going to gain momentum yeah. and then that's how you're going to end up building that database look we're not this is not a sprint if you're in this it, you're going to be running a marathon yeah. so there's there's nothing that I want more than positive reviews from people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have canceled listings. I have turned down, you know, um, I've canceled listings. I've canceled them. I've stopped working with buyers midstream because if I'm getting the vibe, this isn't going according to plan and there's not a way for me to fix it, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. And if I screwed something up, and it's going to be even to my financial detriment. Oh, well, you eat it sometimes. Yeah. I you love know? it. I love it. I love it. I was just, listen, I was just having this conversation with one of my agents the other day um, because, you know, what prospecting allows you to do is have a standard about who you work with. Like, if you don't prospect and you only have a couple buyers, then, you know, you're kind of screwed, right? You got to work with those people. But if you prospect, then you have the ability to go in and fire any client anytime because you know you have another client, right? And so I, I love that mindset, Michelle, where, you know, you said you've had to cancel listings. You get to pick and choose who you want to be in business with. We've earned that, right? Yeah. Your reputation is the only thing you have in this business. Yeah. And, and Sherry Boswell says, serve people well, well serve people talk, right? And that, no. you know, that, that couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, that, that, that couldn't be more true. I shouldn't say that it couldn't be further from the truth. That is so true. In fact, I want to you screenshot know, that. That's like that. that's awesome. I'm screenshotting this. That's really good, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so talk about talk a little bit about like, um, you know, you you've obviously you've we've talked about your success. You've been in the industry for a while. You've you you know you've been achieving at the highest level. You've you're one of the probably one of the best agents in the state of Michigan, maybe in the United States at this point um, for consistency, especially. What's what's the future look like for you? Like, where are you looking to take this whole thing? Hmm. I have so many directions I can take this right now. 
my coach is asking me that same question. Michelle Sayward, what do you want? And I hope she sees this video because she'll laugh, but that's what she says to me. Um, is that, where do I see this? I mean, right now, I, I think I'm... I think I'm screwing up big time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap, folks. That's it for this one. Thank you, Michelle. That's it. So, sorry, Mike. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I'm screwing up big time because I know other agents who take the same amount of listings that I take and they turn it into 300 deals a year. Right? Like yeah. I took I took 109 listings last year and I only turned it into 185. There's something broken and could definitely be better. So um, I got, that's why Matt's like chiming in and he's watching. Hi, Matt. See, look, that's why he's helping me. Um, and he's, I called him, help me out, brother. And um, so so there's something fundamentally broken that I could definitely be doing better. Um, so I know I can grow the level of business and how we're managing, you know, lead and lead follow up for sure. So, so that's, that's something I'm focused on fixing. Um, I'm also focused on um, giving and sharing. Like I moved to, I'm, here I go, I moved to eXp Realty in June because I see the future of real estate and where it's going. And it is giving me a tickle in the belly, really. I've worked for other brokerages in the past. The community, the collaboration and the sharing and the giving. I can give freely. I don't know, Mike, that I would have had this interview with you a year ago. I don't know that I would have been sharing as openly. And and for the community that EXP has created and how they want to see other agents succeed and grow, I I now have very good reason with this company to give it all away and to share it with the public. Yeah. Um and um and you know, so so that's what I want now. I want to um see other people become wildly successful. And I want to see how good this this game can get before it's all said and done. Love it. I love it. I, let, yeah. I, I was my, my firm belief is the difference between where you are and where you want to be is what you don't know. And what's great about what's great about and I didn't want to make this an EXP commercial, but I'm certainly glad you brought that up because I'm such a I'm so proud to be at EXP. Mm -hmm. uh, we moved over from Keller Williams a year ago and and I'm so glad I made that move. But the biggest surprise to me, Michelle and we didn't even anticipate this, was the sharing and collaboration with top okay. agents across the United States. It's been unreal. And yeah. so, you know, for that, I am truly grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't do this for an EXP commercial either, but that is an unintended positive uh, upside. Like, I was def that wasn't the reason I thought about moving to the company. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. no. So, so um, just curious, why did you move? <laughs> Um, I am, I am, I feel like Chris Farley saying this. I am 42 years old. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I've been doing this 18 years and I'm 42 years old and you know what, at some point it's gotta be about not just the next deal. It's gotta be about building a future. And, and I think technology is changing things at wicked, wicked pace faster than we can ever keep up. And I knew Again, something had to fundamentally change in the way that I'm doing business. So no matter what pace you're running at, if you're running at a pace of 50 deals a year and that's all you can handle because that's all you're equipped to do at the moment, um, you don't know how to build a team. If you're running at a pace of I'm brand new and I'm trying to figure out the market, if you're like me and you're at 185 deals a year and there's got to be something better and you can't seem to break out of that, um, I was just looking for another opportunity that would provide solutions. And yeah. that's why I move companies. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's truly a pleasure to be in partnership with you here. And um, I hope to be able to run into you at the shareholders meeting in mm -hmm. June. Yeah. And um, I'm curious as we wrap this up, um, and by the way, I've had so much fun and thank you. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy day to yeah. uh, drop some serious knowledge to our audience. So how can people, if people want to learn more about, you know, um, your listing presentation or, or how to get better on the listing side of the business, um, or if they have questions about joining eXp, right? Um, how can people connect with you, Michelle? Yeah, I literally just did a post the other day um, because it surprises me that people wonder how I do this kind of production and they never ask questions. So you can you can hit me up on Messenger. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Michelle Sayward. Um, S-A-W-A-R-D. You can find me there. 
shoot me a text message. I'll get my cell phone number. I think it's on Facebook, 313-622-1609. Um, shoot me an email. I, I will, like I said, give it all away. I can't take it with me. I love it. I love it. Well, you are, you are, um, you are a true gem in the industry and I look forward to connecting with you here in a couple of months down in Orlando. Yeah. Are you, are you going to be at that event in May? Is I will, I will be, Oh, I'm coming to the Derby event too. It's a, Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. I'll, be down, I'll be down in Cincinnati. So if you're there, I will definitely see you there. I'm looking forward. I'll be in Cincinnati, but not the Derby. Okay, cool. I'll see you in Cincinnati then here in, in like a month. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Thank you for doing right. this. It's so much fun, Mike. All right, Michelle. Thanks. Bye. Bye.